On today's show, Dyson Danos is the topic. Glenn Willis is back. This is part two, and it's coming to you right now. You are Locked On Hawks, your daily Atlanta Hawks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 1801 of the Locked On Hawks podcast. I am your host, Brad Roland, coming to you on a Wednesday evening into Thursday. And today's podcast is brought to you by the folks at FanDuel Sportsbook. And now through September 22nd, all customers of FanDuel can bet $5 to get a three-week free trial of NFL Cinema Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I also want to encourage you, as I always do at the top of the podcast, to make us your first listen each and every day here at Locked On Hawks. Just find us across the board. Wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, please like this episode as you're watching it and also subscribe on the video platform. And we're back with part two of two with myself and Glenn Willis. So if you missed it, I recommend starting with, with the beginning of this conversation. It's episode 1800. It's part one of this of this extended talk with myself and Glenn talking all things Dice and Daniels. But if you're already, already caught up, part two is here for the rest of the conversation. It's uh, always talk, fun to talk to Glenn about anything basketball related, in particular the Hawks. And Dyson's a very, very interesting player for this year's team. So all that said, we'll dive right back into it now with part two of myself and Glenn Willis talking all things Dyson Daniels. I do want to dive into the defense, which is the uh, the headline side of the ball. Not not for most players, people don't want to hear about the defense. We usually uh, talk about it more than people want to because you and I love defense. With Dyson, it is the headline side of the floor for him. Like that's that's his calling card right now. Um, I'm not even sure where to start. It, okay, we talked about it earlier briefly, but it, is he as good as it sounds? Because the numbers, and I'll share some of them in a second, look fantastic. We led with this conversation about whether he's the best perimeter defender they've had in almost a decade. Uh, I found that there's a split though between people that are encouraged like us or people that maybe want to be encouraged like Hawks fans. Uh, whereas some people are like, oh, he's good. He's pretty good. And I, I, I don't know where you fall on that spectrum. I know where I fall, but what do you think of this uh, defensive experience? We'll kind of dive into what he does well. I, I mean, so, so I guess it depends on what a person values and what a person thinks is quote good, what their definition of good is. People might have a different definition of good. What I look for is his technique is explicit like his footwork his screen navigation awesome when he's defending the ball it's always with his chest and his hands out you know that's why he's not not getting fouls in that situation um he he keeps the ball in front of him you know like 99.9 percent of the time um and and just all of that little kind of work that he does technique wise you know serves him well so and on all those areas which are probably i guess maybe the the most fundamental areas of point of attack defense, you know, defending the best creators. Um, and then you know, on top of that, like, you know, I talked about it before as low man, like he's there early, he gets in front of the rim, not under the rim. His, his spacing and help is always on point in the right spot. When he's digging from the weak side at the nail, the dig is, are, is ferocious and he's, you know, causes, you know, balls get kind of coughed up all the time. He's, he's leaning into passing lanes when I was breaking his film down, I can't, I couldn't believe how many times he would be chasing or accounting for the guy running to the rim and transition and then get out and close out the corner. <laughs> I mean, yeah. from his, his, you know, the amount of time it takes for him to get to the rim, to the, co the corner is crazy. You know, so all of that is there right now. If someone wants to say, but Glenn, he hasn't played 34 minutes a game and taken been the, that's totally true. Yep. Right, and it's a different level of responsibility by miles than anything he's ever had. So, in that sense, you know, we, we even talked about the trade, like scaling his defensive workload up. You know, will he be more tired at times? Will sometimes technique slips a little bit when you get fatigued? You know, it's a lot of responsibility. Um, and so, in that sense, but when if you just watch him play and you know, like footwork, screen navigation, help spacing, help timing, just all that, stuff, it's all. You know, you, you want to be, do a little thing where it's like we've been watching the Hawks play defense the last five years. So is it, does yeah. it, is it is it A plus or is it B plus? And I just don't have a baseline for you know, you know. <laughs> that's fair. I, oh, that's, yeah, that's fair. yeah. So, um, but when I watch, I'm like, yeah, he he does all that stuff. He does all that stuff right. really, really well. Like I said, on offense, the question is skill up, right? On defense, it's more imperative that he becomes the guy and can handle 34 minutes a game if that's the, whatever the number is going to be and becomes a guy who is at the end of the game 
when DeMar DeRozan's trying to get to the el- elbow and get his, sh- you know, his shot up, like Dyson's on him, right? Last year it was like Jalen on, on him, you know, sometimes right. and things like that, right? Jalen can be more of a helper and things like that. So, so that'll be the thing too. It'll be an adjustment for him. And I think Hawks fans need to realize it is going to be that much defensive workload, that much defensive responsibility. It's going to be an adjustment for him. It might take a little time for him to figure out how to manage his body through that, how to manage his rhythm through that and things like that. Yeah. I'm glad you put it that way because I'm on the he's awesome side of things, and it's pretty clear to me that he is. But there are a little bit of caveats where he's got to prove it a little bit more. And um, there's two ways that I would put it. One is the way you just laid it down with the minutes and all of that, and the fact that you're he played he's played a decent amount in his first two years. Like he played 14 minutes, 14 or minutes last year. That's that's a real number, like 22 a game, something like that. But on this team, we think he's going to play 30 minutes a game or more. We'll see. But that's my projection at this moment in time. That is different. That's a different workload. And also, um, we poke fun about uh, many times, including on this conversation, but going from a system in New Orleans where he had other really good defenders around him to a system, situation in Atlanta where we like what they've done personnel-wise this offseason, it's obviously not as good personnel player for player as there was in New Orleans. And New Orleans has some weaknesses too. CJ's not very good at this point. Zion's a different kind of beast defensively. Ingram's just okay-ish, but they have Herb Jones. They have guys like they have Alvarado at a point of attack being being an irritant, all those things. Trey, Trey Murphy's improved a ton. Trey Murphy's a very – yeah, that kind of stuff. He, I mean, of course, he had Nance behind him some. Um, yeah. But anyway, I, I think that in Atlanta, again, I, I've only heard stuff behind the scenes, not on the re- – I think they're viewing him as their number one defender. And I think yeah. that we, we agree that that's what he should be on paper right now. That's a different job because no matter what you think about Dyson – Herb Jones was the number one defender in New Orleans. He was getting the he was getting the assignment most of the time. Now it'll be Dyson. Basically, every time there's a star level guy at the one, two, maybe three, Dyson's gonna get the first crack on that guy. I'm pretty sure this year. So that's a different situation. Now on the other side of things, the numbers look great, both advanced and traditional, quote unquote. And also, he's not a high foul guy. A lot of guys in this kind of archetype that play a little minutes who and are aggressive. And maybe don't have to worry about staying on the floor for 30 minutes. Will end up fouling a lot. And he actually did. He's a very low foul player, despite having a 3% steal rate, which is a really, really intriguing combination. And the fact that he can navigate screens already in a pretty impressive way. He's got enough size to guard wings. Like some of these guys who are on ball um, screen navigation terrors are like 6'3, 6'4. He's 6'7 and a legitimate 6'7. Like he's a big, big guy. He's not thick yet, but he's really strong. I don't know, man. He checks so many boxes for me that I have a hard time not getting really excited, even if I will tell myself we got to see it in a bigger role. What we've seen so far, I think, is unequivocally pretty awesome defensively. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. And Game Time is the best place to find tickets. There's nothing like checking out a live event, whether it is sports and music or even theater or comedy. They also have a new feature at Game Time called Game Time Picks. It makes getting tickets even easier for you. They filter out the stuff that you don't need and only show you the incredible deals and great seats. You have to actually waste any time searching through thousands of different tickets on their app. For example, there are awesome deals all the time for the Hawks, including the season opener this year at State Farm Arena on October 23rd against Brooklyn, including a pair of tickets for only $27 each on Game Time right now, including fees. That's a really awesome deal, of course. There's more of that happening all the time at Game Time. Plus, my personal favorite feature of Game Time is you can actually view the seats through the all-in pricing and no, super, no surprise fees at the end of the checkout process and at the checkout screen. Also, get a view from your seats in the app before you buy them so you know exactly what you're going to be getting to and seeing when you get into that venue. And you're also getting the lowest possible price with the folks at Game Time. Take all of the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app right now, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account at Game Time. Redeem that promo code. It is Locked On NBA. That's L O C K E D on NBA. Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. What time is it? It's Game Time. And if you kind of zoom out a little bit, you know, where that helps, we've talked about it. Hunter doesn't have to be on, on ball handlers that he doesn't really need to be on anymore, right? You can optimize Hunter's defensive role. You don't have to take Risha Shea and make him the primary defender for 12 minutes of game, you know, yeah. while he's off, you know. And so he just he just lets you kind of um optimize the role in defensive workload you're assigning everyone else because of what I would think he can handle. And like I said, I don't expect to be perfect in the beginning because it is it's a new workload. But I he, you know, 
we've talked for years. Bogey makes everything on offense easier for everybody else. I think I think Dyson is kind of a parallel on defense in, in that sense. I think there are going to be times when they're trying to put Trey into you know the, the screen, and Dyson's like, nope, I'm going. You know, or they're trying to make Trey low man, and Dyson's up at the three point break on the weak side, and Dyson's like, nope, I'm going to go down here. You know, he's so good at, at all that sort of stuff. You know. And people people turn here, but I mean that Hunter's good at that stuff too. But Dyson is a more dynamic defender and more versatile defender than Hunter by a, quite a lot. Like Hunter, Hunter yeah. is more help team defender now. Dyson is on ball and off ball, and you know, in trans, all of that sort of stuff. And so, so for me, I think you know the, the other question for Quinn on media day might be, and you know, like everybody will get so many, but like. Is Dyson going to play with Trey a ton? You know, because for me, like one of the most valuable aspects of putting him on this team is just he's finally a guard i view him as a guard that can just keep trey out of trouble on defense and that is really valuable that's something trey hasn't really had except for what tiny little bit nate would play delon with trey a little bit in that one season apart from that yep. they haven't really had that you know 100% um, sure. so so yeah, yeah. so I think, I think i think that's a that's a real thing to, to think about and the other aspect of you know Late game is is the offense good? Like does does Quinn feels like like on when they get late game possessions, close game, does Quinn feel like Dyson is good enough offense? That I don't have to do offensive defensive substitutions. I can just roll with him on both ends. That's gonna have a big factor with how Quinn plans end of game situations as well. Um, uh, and so that's something just something to keep an eye on because if he feels like I don't have to take Dyson off on offensive possession, it's just easier to kind of manage the continuity of of the, the, the who you're closing with there. Yeah, I actually was on my list to ask you at the end or near the end. We'll do it now, I guess. Like they're, I think they're not to be pessimistic. I just shared how excited I am about his defense. I think there is a pessimistic scenario where he may not be able to close every game because of the offense. If if the offense is not working for him, and because you have Bogey, who we all agree is the top three guy on the team, probably still right at this point in time. Bogey's awesome. Yeah. Um, that like maybe it's Dyson's the odd man out in certain matchups. I think if you're playing against a team that has a great guard he has to defend that that gives him a documented reason to be there but if you're playing another team that doesn't have that guy on the perimeter and he's kind of hurting you offensively and you got to score or maybe you're down five with three minutes to go and you got you want and you want to go off whatever you want to say i don't think it's a lock he's closing every game maybe he'll maybe he'll prove me wrong and maybe maybe he'll stick on offense but that, that's one of the concerns if you want to have one is that there might be times if the shooting doesn't come around this year or whatever that quinn's kind of pulling his hair out on offense with Dyson and maybe wants to go with, even if it's someone that people don't love like Hunter or Veed or somebody else that he likes more on that end of the floor. So that if you're, if he, if he feels like he's playing four on five on offense sometimes with Dyson, which I'm not saying is going to happen, but that's conceivable to me that that might be a situation where he gets yanked around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And there's other situations where you, where depending on what the defense is doing schematically, you just need more shooting on the floor. And that's where yeah. Garrett, you know, Garrett on an offensive defensive association, that's where Garrison might show up, you know, in that situation, Garrison plus Garrison or Risa Shea. I mean, they, they haven't I mean, honestly, I mean, not to be pessimistic, but he, he's the worst shooter of their entire perimeter. Uh, all the perimeter guys, he's the worst shooter. I think right. pretty clear. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, but he's very functional in some other areas. And so yeah. for me, for me, I want to see what Quinn runs and how Quinn kind of creates opportunity for Dyson to I mean the I think I think very highly of Quinn as a coach. And for me, coaches help their players lead into their strengths as much as possible. And so I'm just looking forward to seeing, um, you know, like I said, before, we said a few episodes back, I think Quinn kind of tolerated a lot of carryover last, last year. And, and, and this year I think it's like, all right, uh, you know, free rides over, that. you know, I, I, yeah, that. to cite yeah. back to that, to that example I gave, but, uh, but yeah, I just think I think I think I think there's gonna be a whole lot more motion, a whole lot more attacking the paint, paint touches. You know, you know our guy, you know Brian Oliver talks about that all the time. I love, love when he emphasizes that, and Dyson can help you with that, and three is gonna help you with that, and you know Bogey is in a sneaky way can help you with that. Sadiq tried so hard last year to be a guy who kind of got in there. Veet's really really good at that, you know, and so when you have this group of wings that can, my first option I'm gonna see is if I can get the ball in the paint. My first option, like Bogey's the guy you have an ex a role exception for around that. He's hoping he's going to shoot it. Right. Everybody else, if the if you can get a paint touch, that's what we're doing first. Dyson could do that, and if he could just kind of build from there, then then we'll see if he can be a more reliable offensive closer 
as the season kind of goes on. But you're right; it may it may be touch and go in that sense, or the first Maybe. month or two of the season. So, one more thing before we get kind of wrap start wrap it up a little bit, because um, we talked about this on a lot of different other episodes that you and I have done about the rebounding challenges, particularly in a world where they maybe don't have Clint on the floor as much to wrap it all up. Dyson's a really good rebounder yep. for a guard, like really, really good. In fact, uh, more than six for 36 minutes last year, just for reference, despite the fact that he is a guard and we, granted, he's a big guard, he's six, seven, but he has like significantly better defensive rebound numbers than the Hawks primary forwards last year, non Jalen division. So like, he's a better rebounder than DeAndre. He's better. He's actually had better rebound numbers than Sidney Bay last year. Yeah. And granted, I've poked fun at those guys for not rebounding, but Dyson Daniels is a guard who's a better rebounder than those guys. So yeah. if you're trying to gain rebound, to use Quinn's term that you brought up many times, if you're trying to go a little bit smaller, if you're playing on NECA more, et cetera, he should, in theory, along with Jalen in particular, help with that to where it's not going to hopefully be as much of a problem. And I think there, there might be some times where you need that on the floor too to get by. Now, the defense is beyond the rebound, but as coaches will always say, rebounding is part of defense. You have to close the possession. And I think yeah. that he, having him out there to kind of go up and make yeah, also some really big ones, like it's not always about showy, but he has he's that high point guy. Like, he can really leap. He's a good athlete. And the numbers back it up. Like he's a really good rebounder. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, it, and one of the things that, that allows him to be such a good rebounder, like when you, when Hawks fans start to watch him play, he, on defense, he sees everything. Yeah. I mean, he literally sees everything. And so, oh, and Yeka got put under the rim by the other team center. I'm going to go help rebound the basketball. I'm going to go, I'm going to go down there and not let that, let, let, let that, the, not let that center get the ball. If someone, you know, closes, oh, and Yekka had to close out or Clint had to close out. I'm going to go down there and deal with his big body that's right down there. He sees everything. And that's his processing and his ability to kind of process all these things at once defensively is so impressive. And that's what makes him such, you know, a, a you know, big rebounder. The comparison, you know, Tracy something, may he may not be able to physically do anything about it, right? Dyson has the tools to kind of go, you know, deal with a power forward, you know, and, and, and beat him to the ball. Um, and so th- – that's another aspect I think Hawks fans will really enjoy is just how much processing he demonstrates on defense. I, he can see when the teammate's in trouble. He can find a way to help that teammate that's in trouble, whether, whether that's you know, Trey is low man and needs a little bit more kind of presence down in the paint. Oh, Trey's low man. I'm going to go uh, be a second defender on the ball earlier. I mean, just all this little attention to detail stuff is just it, just really, really impressive. And that shows up in his rebounding too. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. You've heard me talk about FanDuel many times before, and FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. It's something a little bit different for you this time around. However, now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game with YouTube TV and the folks at FanDuel Sportsbook. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. When you get there, by the way, FanDuel Sportsbook, you will know, is awesome and easy to use. They have all stuff you're looking for across the sports betting space from over-unders to point spreads, money lines, player props, live betting, future bets, and much more. The app is safe, it's very secure, and they cover the entire range of sports as well. That includes the NBA, as you listen to this podcast, it's WNBA, NFL is in full swing now, college football, of course, MLB, golf, tennis, soccer, hockey, auto racing, boxing, MMA, and so much more. And now is an awesome time to set up with the folks at FanDuel Sportsbook. And you, all you have to do is visit FanDuel.com to get started. One more time, just visit FanDuel.com and check out America's number one sportsbook. So we've gone long enough. I think we can wrap up a little bit here now. Uh, I think it's clear by discussion. We like him. We're excited about him. Um Hawks fans seem to be upbeat for sure. I think that ideally, and I said this actually as we're recording this today on Saturday, um, when that photo that I referenced at the very beginning of this conversation about Larry Nance came out with Trey and Dyson and Reese Shea, that I think in a perfect world, the Hawks would like that to be their starting trio on the perimeter for a long time. Now, yep. perfect worlds don't, don't always happen. I think that would certainly be the case in an ideal world. Part of that's that they overlap really well. We don't have to go through a lot of combinations, but Dyson and Trey does make sense. You mentioned that earlier about the defense, but even on offense, having a guy like uh, Trey take some heat off of Dyson to not have to be a primary, all those things. Risha Shea would, in theory, bring the shooting, bring some versatility, bring some more size. Dyson's a big guard, all those things. 
Um, it's not going to be that, that way necessarily. And maybe, by the way, there is a real chance that starts opening night this year. It would not blow me away at all if they started if they started this year. Just kind of put a stamp on things, Glenn. New era is here. This is our this is our team plus Jalen and then whichever center you want. Um, yeah. But I'm excited. I mean, I, I think you are too. But is there anything we should share about Dyson Daniels that we have not shared already? No, I, I'm just. I mean, I'm going to have so much fun watching him. And and there's, I mean, you you look at him and Kobe and Keith. You got you got real defend like the you got real defenders. You know, positionally at the one through three in the way that they haven't in a while. You know, yeah. I know Keaton's on Keaton's on two way. I think he's I think he could play a lot. Right. You're you're um, the president of Keaton Wallace Island. I'd say that right now. Uh, go, uh, on Keaton. For, for sure. Um, <laughs> and so it's so it's just gonna be fun to watch. Like you know, really legitimate point of attack defenders and really legitimate on ball defenders. And it's going to be nice to see Hunter not be squeezed into a role that that's not really fit for him anymore. And it's going to be nice to be able to see Jalen clean up plays as a help defender and a weak side, you know, rim helper and all that sort of stuff. That doesn't mean Jalen can't deal with the with some of the top power forwards in the league when that comes, but forcing Jalen onto a two or a three, not great for his bot, you know. And so I just love the defensive roster construction they have this year. Again, if you ask me, are they going to be league average? I don't know. You know, it totally depends yeah. on if, if Quinn's like reach chase playing 20 minutes again, they're probably not going to be league average. If, if the priority is let's get our young core playing together a lot so that we are growing with the big picture in mind, it's going to be a slower go in the beginning defensively. If they default to, we're going to try to start winning games right away. It's going to be more Hunter than maybe some Hawks fans want to see. It's going to be, you know, you know different combinations, you know, in that. I mean, you know how I feel about Hunter defensively, but, um, <laughs> but I understand, I know what, I know where the sentiment is. I'm not a dummy, you know, yeah, um, and all that sort of stuff. And so for me, it's like, you know, will Quinn give us a little bit of a hit on media day? Like, you know, who's like, you know, We'll see. What, well, how do you, Quinn, what's Risha Shea's role in the season starts? You know, Charlie Brown teacher response. I mean, you know, do you, and, okay, you know. so I, I have a, I, this just popped in my head. You remember last year, I think it was the preseason opener, he started two centers. Yeah. Like he started on Yeka and was it Bruno because Clint was out? Something like that. He started two centers. Yeah, like right away. I was that. Yeah, that was right. And people, and people were like, what's happening? It was, and it was, it was against New Orleans, I think. Yeah. And it was kind of a curveball. It wasn't really real. It was just one of those. I think Quinn just likes to mess with us in some ways. Yeah. Um, but no, I'd like to know a little bit more, of course. And maybe I will get some more intel. Hopefully I can share as camp comes together. But that's one of the things about this team. Like Quinn has no interest in talking to anybody in the summer. Like I, I couldn't get. I would love to get Quinn on the pocket. I, good luck. He's not gonna. He's not gonna talk to me in the summer. Quinn, but, Quinn is Wal, Quinn is Waldo in the off season, right? So yeah, no, no hey, chance. Quinn? Uh, <laughs> can't, can't can't find him. Uh, I have I have one. I'm not even sure if it's a, a take. Uh, and it, it's a big, big, big if at the beginning of this conversation. So don't aggregate this, crazy people. If if the Hawks make a jump to league average, let's say defensively, I could see a scenario where Dyson gets some all defense votes, if not making like the second yeah. team. Because yep. he's going to get credit for it in a lot of ways, and he probably should. If that happens, it'll be a, a big part. He'll be a big part of it. Um, generally speaking, awards are, in my opinion, a little bit too aligned with team success in some of these individual ones. Like famously, last year's Bogey Six Man Award, where Bogey should have won, but they just didn't win a lot of games, so he didn't get the attention. But I think Dyson is that level of defender, or, or maybe could be. Uh, has been on a per minute basis to this point. I think he's been up there, I, I, top whatever number you want to say, premier defender in the league. But this is the year to maybe prove that, um, to bring that full circle of more conversation. Like, if he can do that over 32 minutes a game, what he did, what he did over 22 minutes a game last year, he will be on that level. I don't know if he'll get the respect for it, but he'll be on that level defensively. Yeah. TBD, TBD on offense, I mean, even as a – I do want to emphasize one more time, there is more to life than shooting. Shooting's really important. I've always been waving the flag. The Hawks need more shooting, if anything, on this roster. But – especially with regard to Gala Dyson, he does a lot more than shooting. And I, I, I know a lot of the knee-jerk analysis is going to be just like, does he make his threes? And I get it. That's really important. But he does other things. Like He, he has he has real guard skills that will be helpful to take some beat off Trey, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, the, the key defensively to me is better play at the point of attack and then and then also getting the back side of the defense connected where where if we, they don't have to have the center at the level as much this year they more rim protection more more packing the paint more you know more presence down there they had to get away from that last year because they literally had so little point of attack defense and so yeah. if they can get the on-ball defense and plus the back line 
structure of your defense both working well, then getting to league average might be something that they can get to this year. And that would that would make maybe help them win more than 40, you know, be five, six games over 500, something like that. If they could know? be league average. I mean, I, I got this actually, I did Nate Duncan's show on Dunk Don, which I think is behind a paywall. So apologies to everybody. But um, I said this like basically, if they could get to even 18th on defense, yep. it's a clear top six, seven team in the East. Yep. No doubt about it. If it's 25th again, then it's it's hard. So that while the offense is there, there's a little bit of wiggle room on offense too, like between where they were a couple of years ago and where they were last year, where they were elite two or three years ago, and now they were just good last year on offense. On defense, it's more like, can you just not be terrible? We all understand that, but the personnel is undoubtedly better. And I don't think that's being I get why, but I don't think that's going to be appreciated nationally. Cause like, for instance, I don't want to pick on Sadiq. People don't know how limited Sadiq is defensively, let's say. Um and some of the guys they're bringing in, a la Dyson, but even even the supporting, like v, more of V, more of Kobe, that's better defensively than what they were putting on the floor last season. Yeah, yeah. and they're getting Akong- yeah. yeah, yeah, and they're so, getting a getting a Congo's defensive role optimized, getting Hunter's defensive role optimized. Like that makes a big deal. And then just you know, the thing that killed them last year was after their top seven or eight guys, they it was rough. You know, yeah, and, yeah. That, and now now you're like you're going like 13 deep. Of legit, I mean, like they have 13 deep. They have, you know, credible rotation players. And so well, even Jalen, yeah, right. We're we're talking about Jalen. That's what we have. Two more of these left. If you're, if you're if you're scoring at home, we have two more left. It's Jalen and Trey, and we'll get into this. But I think Jalen's defense is going to take a leap because I think that he was fine last year, but there were some young guys stuff from Jalen. Like it was his yeah. first full season in that role. I get it. But like I think he'll improve if I had to project defensively. I think he'll yeah. have a, a step forward. So like it's across the board. You know, Trey, just do what you did last year. Trey, I think would be fine. Trey was better last year than he's ever been. He'll never be good, but uh, all that stuff. So put it all in a blender, and I think you can get to yeah, 16th defensively is very reasonable to me. I don't think it's, I don't know if it's going to happen, but it's reasonable. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that's and, that, and that's the thing is just that they I think they can take you know three, four, or five. They had to do a lot of stuff that aren't really a fit for the personnel they had the last few years. They don't have to do that anymore. And that is going to be huge for them. Like, that's going to be massive for them. Well, and the, and know, the point of attack. We, we right. Dyson's the number one example of it, but we, how many times did we harp on this, you know, on, on this show, on your show, on ETL 29, offline, about how the, pro, the point of attack was just giving the bigs no chance sometimes last year. Yeah. And, yeah, totally. and Dyson is the head. Dyson's the head of the snake on that this year. We're like, that's not going to happen anymore. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be the best defensive team in the world in the perimeter, but adding Dyson alone, if even if they just had the exact same roster that they had last year and just put Dyson on it defensively, they would jump multiple spots. It's as yeah. far as the pecking order is concerned. He's not good. Yeah, I, yeah. After the trade, when I was breaking down Dyson's film, like I, I grabbed a Rockets game. Like James Harden could do nothing with him. James Harden could literally do nothing with him. And then they, there's a few possessions where you had Paul George and Paul George could do nothing with him, you know? And so that's just an example. And he's, he started, I think he started that game and played a ton in that game. And that's why I grabbed it. Um, but he, and that he's, he's legit. He is 100% legit. Now, as we said, scaling up, how's the rest of that go? We'll and that, that, that may take an adjustment and, that, and if it does, it's okay. That's totally fine. Uh, all right, Glenn, thank you for all the time. We've covered, it's probably gonna be three episodes by the time we're done talking. Um, anyway, what can we share with people? Again, it is middle of September. We're recording this on the weekend. It's September 14th for Corey. It'll probably be up in the next day or two. Uh, ATL and 29 is probably the good place to share, yeah. but where, where can folks find all of your work if they have not already? Yeah, yeah. ATL and 29 is a good place to go. Um, and so that's that's great. And then on Twitter, you know, I've done, if you haven't kind of if you've been taking a break, you know, put some material out on David Roddy and Dyson and a little bit of Nance and some other guys uh, there as well. I did, I did a, um, a, a string of uh, Hunter as a help defender and Hunter as a team defender. Uh, so you can go look at all that sort of stuff and I'm excited to get to the season. And so I can kind of, uh, you know, continue to give hopefully sober analysis and, you know, it's one of those things, Brad, where like some Hawks players, family members have me blocked because when it's good, I say it's good. When it's bad, I say it's bad. Not everybody loves that. Oh, I, I, um, I'm right there with you. I, pro- I, I, can, I, will not, <laughs> I will not. I will not share the list, but I, ha- I have a list of people that have blocked me that are related to players or players themselves. So yes, yeah, exactly. There Understandable. You go. I, yeah, um, and so so yeah. So just excited that the season's right around the corner. 
Um, but last year I was able to go to a game. I, I my, my birthday is the second week of October, and I used to go spend that in Chandigarh with my daughter. And so I tried to catch a game on the way in or on the way out. I did the schedule didn't really line up that way this year, so which is great because I, I need time with my daughter. But um, <laughs> yeah. um, but but I mean, in no time, like we're gonna have a preseason game. So almost there. Uh, yeah, so like, looking forward to that and looking forward to uh, just kind of seeing what looks different, what, what, what Quinn has not doing this different than, than last season. So I'm excited to get to that point. I am as well. And uh, hopefully we can find time to talk about Trey and Jalen between now and the start of the season. It might even be during preseason. We, I'm not going to guarantee it's before the before media day at this point. Maybe it will be. I don't know. But the good thing about Trey and Jalen is that they're going to be here. So we know they're not going to get traded between now and opening night yeah. unless something crazy, crazy, crazy happens. So. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. I appreciate just publicly Glenn doing all of these shows with me, spending all this time talking. It's very much appreciated. I know by the listeners too. A lot of people love these, and I'm glad they do. Uh, I, I I had to laugh when you mentioned all of the all the nuance uh, supporting defensive clips for DeAndre Hunter. I'm sure those were hugely received on Twitter or X.com, however you want to say that. Just yeah, uh, I was just waiting for the first person that's like, "Can't you get that for nine million dollars a year?" You know, and, <laughs> and I was like, and I was like. <laughs> Fair sentiment. It's it is. I mean, and I was like, yeah. yes, this role has been financially recalibrated in the league yes. since Hunter signed that extension not that long ago. So, I mean, yeah, the, the example you go look at is you know, Caleb Martin. You know, you know, yeah, Caleb you Martin know. got like a third of what DeAndre makes, and uh, people. I think if you pull the league and said who would you rather have, people would pick Caleb Martin. A lot of them would anyway, or we should be close. So. It, I mean, yeah, I mean, I so so I get it, but but the thing for me is. Like, the contract is not going to change. Sorry, I, I hate to break news to you, but the contract is not going to change. It is not. I'm ex- I, I am. It, I'm excited. Excited the right word. Interested to see, it, like if Hunter can be more impactful off the ball this year. So that's just a, that's just a wrinkle that I'm I'm looking for there. And yes, Hawks fans, I know how you feel about John Hunter. Okay, <laughs> we all understand. So. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter, Hunter and Capella are in, are, in, are in the penalty box for Hawks fans. I get it. It yeah, is what yeah, it is. My, but, uh, yeah, my favorite tweet, my favorite tweet last year was when Pop told all the fans in San Antonio to stop booing. I said, "This is me on the timeline every day with Hunter and Capella. <laughs> stop booing." That was my cool. top tweet last season. I think on yeah. the on the front lines. All right, Glenn. Well, thank you for being here, my friend. Uh, please check out ATN on Twenty Nine. I know I actually on the mailback show last week. I listed a bunch of podcasts including that one but hawks podcasts across the board ethos hawksby i don't i won't name them all now because i'll forget but lots of hawks podcasts including yeah. 29 for sure check it out follow glenn on social media at willis underscore glenn on twitter thank you sir for being here as for everybody else please subscribe to this podcast search out loft on hawks anywhere you might find podcasts audio side apple spotify etc if you're watching on youtube like this episode as you're watching it and also subscribe there as well thanks for being here and we'll see you all next time